Greetings, beloved hearts of love. Mother Akasha greets you through my messenger, Usa, and I offer each of you who desire to receive the enduring love and fulfillment of my heart flame as I enfold you in my rose-pink flames and rays of divine love. September the 8th, Queen Elizabeth II made a peaceful transition from your world and I wish to inform you that the Queen has been raised in her light garment to the great light realm that we call Shambhala. Many throughout the world now grieve and honor the life of this remarkable woman, this remarkable Queen. In Shambhala, she was met by her great-great-grandmother, the Ascended Queen Victoria, who was given her own ascension a number of years ago. At this time, the Queen is now resting, having been placed in a light sleep while a new physical body is being created for her. Once she is comfortable and well-adjusted in her new garment, which usually takes a day or two, Arrangements have already been made for the Queen to meet her husband, Prince Philip, who has been living in Shambhala since his own transition from your world. Beloved hearts, just as there are in your world protocols that must be followed after the Queen's passing, protocols initiated in Great Britain, Canada, and other nations of the Commonwealth that honor the life and service of the Queen. There, too, are protocols planned that will be followed in Shambhala for Queen Elizabeth. After being united again with her husband, Prince Philip, the Queen will meet her mother, known to you as the Queen Mother, and with her sister, Princess Margaret, who have been in Shambhala for a few years now. In approximately three weeks' time, another visit will occur with Queen Victoria. This has been arranged, and this time, that visit will include Princess Diana. This is all that I can share with you at this time. And so I would like to take this opportunity to review some things with you. Those of you who are awakened spiritually, you know that there is no death to consciousness, your own individual consciousness, spirit, or soul. There is only the loss of the physical body a body that is required in order to remain in your world. The mass of the people of Earth have either been living in the physical world of your planet, and when they lose their physical body, they return to a place that we call the Plains of Bliss, where they rest and then prepare to return to the Earth plane again for another reincarnation. This evolution of humanity has been ongoing for millions of years. Indeed, it can be considered sad that most people are not aware that there is no death to their individuality, to their consciousness, only the loss of the physical body. Now, under intervention from Earth's ascended host, who live in the fifth dimension, for the last 100 years, there are some who have left your world in what is called the so-called death, who have been escorted by angels to the great light realm of Shambhala. 
These generally are individuals who through spiritual growth attained sufficient expansion of their consciousness and had made some contact with their inner self, their divine nature, or the source of their existence. By their attainment, these ones are granted permanent freedom from this world, from the cycle of reincarnation, and are raised to the great realm of light that we call Shambhala, where they continue their spiritual studies until fully enlightened. Upon arriving in Shambhala, in their light bodies, new physical bodies are created for these ones. Many of them will remain in the light realm for several years until they are readied to be raised to their final freedom in the ascension. There, joining the ascended host in the fifth dimension of your planet, where they begin to serve as new ascended masters. There are also some from your world who at the end of their physical life are also raised to this great light realm, not necessarily because of their spiritual awakening, rather because they had lived a life of great service and had become a positive influence upon millions of peoples. These are ones who in some manner fulfilled a chosen higher purpose of their life, expressed in the many different fields and careers of their lives. These ones include state leaders, musicians, scientists, some religious figures, and much more. These are individuals who have left a remarkable footprint and influence upon humanity through their work. History often records what these ones represented in the lives they lived. History will be kind in their musings of the life and service of Queen Elizabeth, and rightfully so. If you ask those who loved the Queen, there is no uncertainty in them regarding all that Queen Elizabeth represented to them and their country. A sovereign monarch of 15 countries, to me, the Queen represented in her service. A world leader, a statesperson of such steadfast grace in service and deed. Beloved hearts, of love. No matter our station in life, we are all wise to search ourselves and come to know and live what we feel we can offer to others, how we might serve in the life we are given, and to self-determine through our acts and deeds of service kindness, and caring, what we represent to life. The world has always had and always will have those individuals whose lives represented something greater than the average citizen's life offers on earth. Just to review a few of those in history, I suggest the lives of four individuals noted in the Bible. Moses represented a leader state of consciousness. Isaiah represented prophecy to the world. Jesus represented the Messiah consciousness. And the Apostle Paul represented the consciousness of the messenger, preacher, 
or teacher. In each case, it is a particular state of consciousness expressing itself and appearing through such individuals. George Washington certainly represents the consciousness of national integrity. Abraham Lincoln represents the consciousness of individual integrity and equality. Martin Luther King represents an individual of great conscience, driven to create a movement of freedom, equality, justice, and love. Nelson Mandela represented a quality of mindfulness, a consciousness of equality, peace, and love. And consider just a few of the women who left an enormous footprint in this world in all they represented in their lives. Women such as Florence Nightingale, Catherine Hepburn, Margaret Thatcher, and Mother Teresa. It does not mean that all of these people and others like them were liked by everyone. Yet, all these examples, and there are thousands of others, represented something. Their life represented something. They left an impact upon this world. In each of these, consciousness was expressing and representing something that had the means to make the world a better place. And now, I suggest to each of you who are consciously living a spiritual path, those of you who are awakening, your consciousness is now going to keep growing, expanding, and you will find yourselves changing and evolving in the most wonderful ways. I suggest all of you are readying yourselves to be instruments whereby divine consciousness expresses in greater and greater measure in your future days. The very nature of that divine consciousness will express as the best of you that is yet to come. Your own awareness will initiate an inner knowing of the many gifts of divine consciousness each of you will come to experience and express, and in this will come to you an inner awareness of what your life will represent to this world. Beloved hearts of love's eternal presence, I say to you, you need not wait until history muses as to what your life in this world represented. I say again, you need not wait until history muses as to what your life in this world represented. Rather, through your choices, your intentions, your state of consciousness, will come to reveal both to yourself and to others what your life represents while being in this world. Many of you now, through your spiritual studies and meditations, have restored a conscious and real connection 
with the source of your existence. And at this particular hour of your evolution, you will best become what your life is to represent in this world by seeking to make of yourselves a living channel, an instrument whereby the divine nature of higher states of consciousness is finding greater expression in yourself. To let your mind become an instrument where divine mind, divine intelligence is expressing through. To make of your heart and your feelings an instrument where your soul, the source of divine love, can find greater expression through your life. To be willing to be your own person, to cultivate your own individuality, is the great gift of your soul. The world knows not yet what is the soul. The soul is the best part of you. That divine aspect of you that few in this world have ever connected to and made of themselves an open door for the genius of their soul to find expression in their lives. Now, for all of those awakening and with much help coming in from the Ascended Divine Mothers, beloved hearts, now the door to your soul is opening and it is your soul that will beautifully cultivate your own individuality, free of the duality that is in the outer world. And as your individuality blossoms, here is the key to defining and living what you will represent to this world. Your hour is forthcoming. And I, Mother Akasha, I ask you, choose now and every day that your mind consciousness be an instrument for higher consciousness, even the exalted Christ consciousness to express through you. Choose now that your heart and feeling side of life be an instrument for your soul to express through. You must commune inwardly this desire and choice. Then, for a few minutes afterwards, enter into the receptive silence of meditation. For it is in the silence that the divine pathways between your mind and higher mind, your heart and your soul, it is in the silence for these divine pathways to open and be fulfilled. As you become a greater instrument for divine mind and heart, expressing through the life that you have been given, here you will inwardly come to know everything that you desire that your life will represent while you are in this world. Your lives now are intended to become a natural unfoldment of harmonious joy lived at all times. All that is divine and good is to unfold from the center of your beingness. 
Therefore, it is a daily requirement to turn within, to turn within to the Master Presence that abides within you, and offer yourselves to be an instrument of Divine Mind and Sacred Soul. Follow that by a few minutes of silence again, for it is in the silence that your own individual consciousness opens and the inflow of divine mind and sacred soul begins to flow through the life you have been given. In this process, you are making yourself one with all that is divine and heavenly, the best parts of you. In this process, as an instrument of the divine, the higher consciousness, the soul, is expressing through the life that you have been given. In this expression comes an ever-increasing awareness of you, you, the beautiful individual being, you. In this journey of becoming God-realized, the real you unfolds, and you will come to know what your life is to represent while being in this world. Above all, as a transcendent peace waits greater expression in you and through you, I urge you to daily begin your spiritual life with the understanding that all conflicts must be settled first within your own consciousness. I urge you to remember that all initiates, meaning those who are turning to an interest in metaphysics, spirituality, and become studying, this makes all of you initiates, neophytes of higher learning, of higher knowledge, and critical to this pathway is the dedication to essential harmlessness, peace and harmlessness, along with the mutual agreement to end all conflict within your own consciousness. Beloved hearts of love, all of you awakening now, and all who are the next group to be awakening upon the earth, all of you assist yourself in amazing ways by reminding yourself, the more you awaken, the more you spiritualize your consciousness, the more you dedicate your life, the more you will have heavenly, invisible presence with you, walking with you, comforting you, nurturing you, guiding you. And that invisible presence begins with the presence of angels. Angels who are not yet visible to the outer sight, angels who come to guide you, to protect you, and to lead you to the next circumstances in your life that will further your great awakening, complete the letting go of the limited human side of life, advance the journey of healing from the depth of your being. And once angels have been with you long enough, 
It is the angels that work with your own mighty I am God presence to draw closer to you the great ascended masters living in the fifth dimension. And there are thousands of those ascended masters. And today over 250 ascended masters are dedicated in assisting many of you complete your awakening, become fully enlightened, become the future Christ upon the earth. And for this, you must have that angelic intervention. You must have as many of the dispensations that have been available to those awakening at this time that come from the great Ascended Master realms. As you evolve and spiritually grow, becoming more and more aware that your life comes with purpose, magnificent purpose, to outpicture, to individualize the source of your existence, the polarity of light and love, divine love in the life that you are been given. You will find precious hearts, every aspect of yourself changing and evolving, a new set of virtue and character, noble character in which you live your life, upon which you stand your own individuality, and which gives reason, a knowingness, a new discernment of what your own life seeks to represent whilst you are here in this world. The time is now. Whilst there are those who have served in this world for years, depart and take on their next journeys, such as Queen Elizabeth, there are many of you who are being prepared to step up and take on new expanding roles as your lives become soulful expressions of divine consciousness. As you come to that place where the duality of good and bad and the pain and limitation of outer human life no longer touches you. And each of you have come to that place where you are consciously connecting inwardly with a master presence. By whatever name you refer to that presence as a greater hierarchy that loves you and is ready to assist you. Beloved hearts, it is your time to intend that your higher purpose, the greatest purpose of your life, be revealed, be fulfilled in the life that you are given. And to make that sovereign decision that when you leave this world, history will have lots to muse about regarding all that your life represented while you were here in this world. I thank you, beloved precious hearts. I thank you. For those of you who have been listening to the Ascended Master broadcasts and this recording on the Academy YouTube channel, I invite you to visit the Academy's new website, the RadiantRoseAcademy.com, for it has much to offer you. I thank you. I enfold you in the light of Father and Son and the love of my own heart flame. Might you love 
to dream, to delve deep within your own self, to determine, to become aware, to approve, to accept, to give permission, then action and deed to all that your own life desires to represent while you are here in this world. In the presence of the Christ, I bless each of you. In the presence of the Ascended Master's mother's love, I bless you. Namaste, namaste, namaste.